Hi, this is Tim, and welcome to Talks with Tim. And today we are going to tackle a very often asked question that honestly, in the end, I do not have a perfect answer for. And that is, do you need a college degree to get a job as a PLC programmer or to work in industrial automation? And not only is this a common question I get, but this is also a question I get from employees and employers. And that's what makes it a little unique because I hear from a lot of well experienced people that have no college degree and are struggling to get a job. And I also hear from some, what at least sound like outstanding companies to work for that can't find anybody to fill a job. And it just sometimes feels like I'm more a playing matchmaker than I am actually talking about automation topics. But I'm gonna to try to tackle this today and I'm mainly going to pick some questions that have come in and really try to address them and maybe help some people on both sides kind of navigate to each other. So I'm gonna start with the employees because I think their questions are a little easier to answer. So the most cut and dry question that I get and I get often is, is it possible to be a PLC programmer without a degree? Well, absolutely. There's lots of PLC programmers out there that are at the top of their game and have no degree. Now, that doesn't mean that they didn't have to get a master's from the College of Hard Knocks to get there. And we'll talk a little more about it later because the second most popular question I probably get along this same route is this person says, on a couple interviews, I was told that I needed a degree from a recognized university to work as a PLC programmer. What is your opinion of employers that don't trust people without a degree yet would even ask for a person with a degree to open up a laptop and show that they know anything? Well, here's my thing is if it's their rule and it is their hard rule, and then it is what it is. It's not going to be a fit for you and you need, to, you need to move on somewhere else. You can't sit there and dwell on that. Now, the question is, is it a hard rule? Because if you've watched many of my videos, you know that I have helped a lot of people without degrees get into job positions that require degrees. And they didn't do it by lying on a resume or an application. Never do that. But I won't say it's impossible to get into these jobs without all the qualifications. So let's take a look at a particular automation job and just see what it says. This is a job for Rockwell Automation and I'll put it down in the description. It, it, it was a public job. I found it on LinkedIn. So there's nothing hidden here, but it is for a senior field support engineer. And its basic qualifications are you have to have a bachelor's degree in engineering or technology. Then its preferred qualifications are to have at least five years of directly related experience, the ability to travel throughout the service area, Proficiency in PLC and HMI programming utilizing RS Logics 5, 500, 5000, RS View, Factory Talk, ME, SE, Networking, RIO, DH, Device Net, and Ethernet Communications. Application project experience utilizing Rockwell Automation's advanced software packages such as Historian Asset Center, Vantage Point, Plant Energy Metrics and experience in virtual machine computing and thin client technology. Now, that is a very specific set of preferred qualifications. And here's where I've got to tell you, even though they're Rockwell Automation, if I was sure this is the job that I wanted and I was like energetic and passionate about this and I hit all those marks and I didn't have a degree, I might would be willing to put my name in the hat. All they can do is say no. Now don't waste their time. In other words, don't say, you know, oh, I've got two night classes of PLC programming or I've been to the PLC lab. That definitely does not qualify you for this job. But 
I might would take my chances on this. And yeah, okay, maybe they say no, but maybe at least you get a phone call back. And then, you know, you've, you've got a chance to prove yourself and you better be ready. I will say that. I mean, if, if you go in there without really their basic qualification and you fumble completely and then don't expect to get another call. Now I will criticize Rockwell a little bit on this listing, just from a general recruitment point into our industry is really, I'm going to, I didn't read the, the initial job description because really I just, even now I'm not too excited about reading it, but it says the senior field support engineer serves as a primary contact for Rockwell automation customers. They are focused on improving customer relationships, resolving commercial and technical issues. The field support engineer works on a variety of commercial and technical issues, both independently and with a team. Other activities of a field support engineer include, but are not limited to blah, blah, blah. This reads about like the specifications on the latest control logics processor. And while that might get me excited, that's not going to get somebody excited that is looking to get into our industry. And I do think that is something that we need to work on as an industry. And I'm just going to throw a couple of them out there that I really did find that were kind of catchy. And I'm not going to use the company names because really I just looked through the job descriptions and found these. I have no idea whether these are good companies or not, but blank is seeking a senior full stack software engineer who is smart, curious, and loves the challenge of solving problems that improve people's lives Our intelligent device support solutions use the latest technology stacks and cloud technologies. You'll collaborate with a fun and close-knit agile team to architect, implement, test, and continuously deliver new features and products to our customers. Well, honestly, this is about the same job. I mean, you massage it a little bit, but man, that just sounded a lot more exciting. And here's another, which coincidentally is another software company, which runs pretty well parallel to our industry. And they always just look like a lot more fun. This one says, as VP of engineering, you will be building and leading a world-class engineering team across the entire stack from hardware to embedded IOT software, mobile applications, processing a large scale of data and optimizing and scaling of our databases. It goes on, but I mean, even there, I'm just like, Ooh, I'm going to be part of building something bigger. I really liked this one. Actually, so this probably is the one that grabbed me the most. You are self-education and self-motivated through curiosity, a passion for building and an unruly desire to do good, changing environments, varying levels of responsibility and challenging objectives allows your true strengths to shine through. In moments of chaos, you continually rely on your developed organizational prowess and your strong ability to prioritize and communicate effectively to get through even the most demanding situations. You've learned that self-promotion is an unsustainable practice and the true form of personal success is obtained through servant-based leadership, humility, and generosity of spirit. That sounds like a job I want. Okay, I've gone on a complete rant, <laughs> but to be one of the world-class automation organizations in our industry, can you please make your job descriptions seem a little more exciting? And yeah, okay, that's probably not going to get the person you are looking for into your position. But when the college student is like, man, I just really am not sure whether I really want to go into the internet software world or the industrial automation software world, hopefully they'll just steer our way if you would make it a little more fun. Or when the high schooler is at the job fair and he goes home, you know, and it's like, okay, do I really want to become an engineer or do I want to become a whatever? It would at least look a little more fun to them. But okay, that's enough on picking on Rockwell Automation's job description. But here's the thing. If you are looking at a job at one of the bigger automation companies, then chances are, and I will say chances are, their requirements are fairly stringent. Now, again, if you really 
just think you're a fit for that job and you almost hit the qualifications, I still would put my name in the hat. But I would not get upset if you're rejected or never hear anything back because, you know, they are the bigger companies and they probably have a better idea of exactly what they're looking for. Now, the other part of the employers out there are the ones that are probably, we'll say in the medium automation companies or even worse in the small automation companies. And I talk to people all the time where they're like, yeah, we can't find the people we're looking for. And I'm like, well, hey, how did you come up with this job description? And we're like, well, we copied and pasted it off one of the big guys. And that's why I picked this particular job description because this will, this will get copied and pasted to other companies. I was talking to a company the other month, actually about something completely unrelated. And they're like, yeah, we're struggling to get welders that really do quality work. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that is an issue. You know, the trades are really deficient right now. And I'm like, what are, you know, what are your qualifications or what do you require? They're like, well, we require a college degree. And I'm like, a college degree? I mean, just because somebody has a bachelor's degree in metallurgy doesn't mean I trust them to weld a set of stairs together I've got to walk on. At that point, I want a certified welder. That's what I find with a lot of these descriptions is most employers are not sure why or sometimes even what the qualifications that they're putting on a job description mean. Okay, a lot of jobs, maybe they do require a college degree, or maybe certain companies just have a preference that, yeah, they want everyone there to have a college degree. That is their preference. That doesn't mean that they're going to get the best. But if you're just copy and pasting from other companies and you're not getting qualified leads, then you need to really look, one, at your qualifications, but also maybe at your culture, or maybe even if you copied and pasted that job description, it doesn't sound that fun. Besides having Rockwell Automation's logo at the top of it, I would never apply for that job. But if you've got a job listing out there and you're not getting qualified applicants, then you may need to change your standards. Now, I did not say lower your standards. I said change your standards. So right now you're requiring a four-year bachelor's degree. Well, what if someone has a two years associate's degree and so much experience? Or just someone has an insane amount of experience or they have a certification in this language and in that language and all those other things. In other words, I've got news for you. If you think that you're gonna get somebody right out of college with a bachelor's degree and them actually be able to do something out of the gate, you're in for a rude awakening. They are gonna need a lot of experience before they can be beneficial to you. So in conclusion on this, if the job has a hard rule that you need a degree, then it's their hard rule. You need to move on. Now, if you really think this is the job you want, and you think you hit all the other qualifications, then apply for it. But then don't get upset with them or upset with me if they never call you back. Now, if you're an employer and one, you're an employer and you're listening to this video trying to figure out how to get more people into your job opening, then quit copying and pasting these ads. And finally, if you are a big company and you happen to be watching this and you're in industrial automation, will you please make your job descriptions look more fun so our talent will quit going to Google and Apple? So I hope this has helped maybe clear up for employees and employers a little bit of what qualifications you should have on a job listing. And yeah, let's talk about it in the comments. What do you think? As an employee, do you think that you're missing out on job opportunities because you don't have a college degree? Or do you feel that you paid for a college degree and you have not got the benefit that you were promised out of it? And as an employer, how do you feel about your qualifications? Do you feel you're getting top-notch talent based off what you have? Are you having trouble getting them? And let's talk, let's see if we can maybe even match some of you up in the comments. Till next time.
Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.